Hi, my name is Michael Bird, and welcome to The Red Couch, a new web show about internet, freedom and security, brought to you by CyberGhost VPN. What's up today? Obama's lame excuse for violating your privacy, protecting children's online freedom from their parents. But first, what connects the CIA, nerds, terrorism, and sex. <music> Hackers not getting enough could blow up another World Trade Center, implied the ex-director of the CIA, Michael Hayden. The four-star general was targeting activists who support Edward Snowden, the whistleblower who revealed that the US government is spying on the world. According to the communist daily newspaper, The Guardian, Hayden said these activists are 20-somethings who have not talked to the opposite sex in five or six years. <laughs> and he should know, he has access to all of their emails and phone calls. Hayden said that activists were likely to respond with cyber terror if the US prizes out Snowden from his current Russian hideout. Who for them are the World Trade Centers? asked Hayden. Citing sources known as no evidence whatsoever, Hayden equated virgin nerds watching marathons of Gravity Falls to international terrorists who killed over 3,000 people in New York City. A trend is emerging. The federal prosecution internet activist Aaron Swartz for downloading some stuff, which subsequently led to his suicide. The 90-year conviction of soldier Bradley Manning for supplying 700,000 secret cables to WikiLeaks and now the pursuit of Edward Snowden. What's clear is the US government is switching its efforts from a war on terror to a war on geek. I'm coming to get you. But who are these geeks? Do I live next door to one? Are they under my bed? Did I marry one? Does my daughter hang with them? Well, they're not so easy to spot. Not like terrorists who wear headscarves, carry Kalashnikovs, blow themselves up in public places and appear on the cover of Rolling Stone. No, geeks are a different matter entirely. They're difficult to spot. They rank flavors of Doritos, have Zooey de Chanel on their screensaver, and type on computers using an impenetrable language known as code. President Barack Obama of the United States of America has said that the wide-scale spying on your emails will become more transparent. This is a bit like saying, I'm going to steal your iPhone. I'm not going to give it back. But I can and must make transparent the rationale for why I'm stealing your iPhone. I'm employing a full-time civil liberties and privacy officer to monitor the fact that I'm stealing your iPhone. The theft of your iPhone is necessary. I'm stealing your iPhone to protect the interests of our people and our allies because at some point, possibly in the future, somebody may use your iPhone to call someone who lives abroad who wants to bomb the Lincoln Memorial. I understand your concern. If you complain that I stole your iPhone, that makes you a patriot. But. I am also a patriot because I stole your iPhone. Hey, you've got SIM stapler. It's like having a real stapler in your hand, but it's on a computer screen. Staple, staple, staple. I can't tell the difference. The Red Couch is brought to you by CyberGhost VPN, a virtual private network which protects your private data and gives you anonymity online. On your mark, get set. We're riding on the internet, cyberspace set free. Hello virtual reality, 
interactive appetite searching for a website a window to the world got to get online take a spin now you're in with the techno set you're going surfing on the internet this viral video from 1997 shows an innocent time when parents could leave their children alone with the internet and governments could trust people to communicate through electronic mail without threatening the collapse of Western democracy. Now that I've gotten on the internet, I'd rather be on my computer than doing just about anything. That leads us to the internet dilemma of this week. Can children trust their parents with their online freedom and security? And at the end of the tape, I'll be back to tell you how to safeguard your computer so that you can reduce your concerns about the kinds of websites your children can visit. You never can be too careful. And to help out if requested, though I doubt she'll be asked. <laughs> By monitoring their children's surfing habits, parents are subjecting their kids to warrantless searches without probable cause. By censoring the kind of pages their children can access, Parents are stopping their kids from engaging in a free press. When parents post pictures and videos of their kids on Facebook and YouTube from birth to first poop to first prad for, they're exploiting their children's private property for public use without just compensation. And you have to ask the question, is this illegal? Is this a form of child abuse? Could we see court cases in the future? Beware parents, when you post a video of your naked two-year-old son riding a cocker spaniel around the garden, it may be funny, but you could be facing decades of litigation with your own offspring. 